Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and greet the Yakarai University class of 2012.
your MC. We will begin this morning's ceremony with an invocation by Pastor Jason Princer from the Fayette United Methodist Church. Gentlemen, please remove your caps for the invocation. Let us pray. God in heaven, it is our privilege to invite you here as the guest of honor on this commencement day. We ask that you would bless this graduating class, but more than that, and of first importance, we desire that you would be here with us this afternoon. Among other things, O oh God, you are the creator of the human mind, which you modeled in some fashion after your own great mind. Though we acknowledge that your thoughts are infinitely higher and more profound than ours, we glory in the notion that we may, on our own level, think some of your thoughts after you in this place. Thank you for the precious gifts of knowledge and discovery. I ask on behalf of those gathered here that you would indeed bless each of these graduates Give them the grace to make a difference for the good wherever they may find themselves in the years ahead. For those who will pursue further education, grant not only the knowledge they will need in their chosen fields, but also wisdom to apply that knowledge to life as it really is. For those who will be going directly into the workforce, give a sense of what is right and good and appropriate the often confusing issues they will face. For those in military service, may they draw courage and strength from you. May they serve their country and all of humanity with integrity and honor. For all of these graduates and the families of which they are a part, we ask that they may make a significant contribution to the general welfare of society. May they especially be a blessing to those whose lives they personally touch. And now, may you be pleased with what is done here this afternoon. Thank you for your presence among us. It is in the name of all others that I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Welcoming us this morning on behalf of Upper Iowa University's Board of Trustees is Mr. Bob Firth, Board Chair. Thanks, Holly. Wow, what a day. of our graduates. Today, you are becoming a very special member of a group of 30,000, the Peacock family. From this moment on, you will always be remembered as Peacocks. UIU and your degree will be with you wherever you go. With this accomplishment comes great pride and honor. No one can ever take that away from you. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we want to say a big thank you for coming to Upper Iowa. We are honored you chose to be a part of this university as part of your life. So enjoy the day, have some fun, celebrate, enjoy your family and friends, and go Peacocks. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th president of Upper Iowa University, Dr. Alan G. Walker. Good morning. On behalf of the entire university community, I want to welcome you to our spring commencement. This is truly a special event in the university's history today. Not only does 2012 mark the 155th anniversary of the founding of Upper Iowa University, but today's commencement is the 150th time that we have come together to confer degrees on the men and women graduating from this university. Today is also a special day for you, our graduates. From today on, you will join thousands of alumni from all around the world and will take your place among those who have become leaders in public service, Nobel Prize winners, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, great scholars, and productive citizens of society. As you gather here today, surrounded by your classmates, your families, and your loved ones, we want to thank you for being part of Upper Iowa University. For it is those of you gathered in this room today, and all of those who have gathered here for 150 years before you, who make UIU the ascending university we, which we are all proud to be a part of. Today, there are approximately 1,600 graduates listed in your program, and more than 700 degrees will be conferred. Of those, 640 will receive bachelor's degrees in business, education, liberal arts, math, and science. In addition, approximately 60 will receive master's degrees. At this time, it is appropriate to take a moment to recognize those of you who are graduating with honors. Will those with honors cords please rise so that we can recognize the special distinction
I'm now very pleased to introduce our speaker for this morning, artist Jean Cowan, artist Jean Hampshire Cowan. Ms. Hampshire Cowan is the Senior Vice President and Secretary at Howard University in Washington, D.C. In that role, she is currently leading the effort to expand and develop Howard University's North Research Campus in Beltsville, Maryland. As the Corporate Secretary of Howard University, she manages the affairs of Howard's Board of Trustees, and for over a decade, she planned and managed all official functions of the university. For seven years, she performed a dual role as Vice President for Human Resource Management and has also served as Acting President of Howard University. We're very honored to have artists back with us today. Artists made her first appearance at Upper Iowa, an Upper Iowa commencement this past winter, when she spoke to our Upper Iowa graduates in Malaysia and in Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming artist Andrew Cowan. I 
share a gift with you. If only my commencement speaker on May 2nd, 76 had warned me about fear and its impact on success. Perhaps today I would be the first African American woman to head a Fortune 500 company. Instead, it's Ursula Burns, the chairwoman and CEO of Zillow's Corporation. Fear is the greatest impediment to achievement of our dreams. Many of you will not achieve the life goals you hold in your heart and head today. Not because you're not intelligent, committed, hardworking, and ambitious. No, it will be because you're simply afraid. Afraid to chance failure. Afraid you cannot navigate success. It's amazing, but the greatest barrier to success is the fear of failure. So in the time that I have left, I want to explore with you the verb and noun, depending on how you use it here. Critical to your success is the awareness of fear, its role in your life, and the development of strategies to help you overcome. All of which will be required if you are to achieve your aspirations. Fear is perhaps the oldest emotion known to mankind. Over the years, it's been my greatest friend and my greatest enemy. Fear is not always bad. Fear is a natural response to real or perceived danger. Fear becomes unhealthy, however, when we allow it to control our behaviors and keeps us from doing positive things. Remember, fear is learned behavior. You see, love is what we're born with. Fear is what we learn. Think about children. Their fear is all inquisitive. We need to learn to hold on to some of our childlikeness in our quest to overcome fear. In reviewing literature, especially the book 30 Days to Taming Fear by Deborah Pegas, I found the fear of failure and fear of success was most often cited as reasons for unfulfilled goals. There are lessons to be learned from those who fail. Let's take a look at one of America's most beloved presidents, Abraham Lincoln. So over a 30 year period, Lincoln failed in business in 31, was defeated in the state legislature for 30 and 32. He tried another business in 33, it failed. His fiance died in 35. He had a nervous breakdown in 36. In 43, he ran for Congress and was defeated again. He tried running for Senate in 55, guess what, he lost. The next year, he ran for vice president, guess what, he lost. In 59, he ran for Senate again, and guess what? He was defeated. However, in 1860, the man we call the great emancipator, Abraham Lincoln, was elected the 16th president of the United States. So you see, the difference between history's boldest accomplishments and its most staggering failure is simply the diligence to persevere. The first female governor of Texas, Ann Richards, one of my favorites, said, the path to success is just to keep showing up because other people give up. If you keep showing up, you win. Lincoln refused to allow fear of failure to block his progress. Throughout history, you'll find that many great people fail. So what about you, graduates? The past failure of a thought of failure stop you from pursuing a dream and ambitious goal? Fear of failure is rooted in feelings of inadequacy which is based on the erroneous belief that our success is based on us. This can lead to a life of unfulfilled dreams and frustrations about what could have been. So today I ask, what would you do if you were not afraid? What would you do if you were not afraid? If you get nothing else from this address today, I hope you will ponder this question in the rest of your life. What would I do if I were not afraid? Now, I'm not going to leave you with the dumb of this heavy question. No, today I'm going to talk about what it is you can do when you hit this wall of fear. I want you to employ a couple of simple strategies that I've used. First and foremost, it's important to make sure that we're clear about our true aspirations. Sometimes our aspirations are developed based on what we think or what other people say they think our aspirations should be. The last thing you want to do is to climb a ladder only to learn after getting to the top it's on the wrong wall. Two, you 
want to define success for yourself. Don't allow others to define success for you. And it's certainly not about materialism as we see it in the world. Probe your doubts. Ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen if I don't succeed? Oftentimes we find it's really not too bad. It is also important to practice a can-do attitude. Remember the childhood book, The Little Engine That Could, Thomas? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I can. Try that. It's also important to acknowledge learned lessons from failure and mistakes. Failure is not fatal, neither does it define who you are. It's simply the results of your actions, not a measure of your worthiness. Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And finally, like the Nike slogan, just do it. Even if only for a short time, you must muster the courage to try it. Take the leap, just do it. Because we find that nine times out of 10, we'll succeed. That's when you call on your faith. And I'll say a little bit more about that shortly. Now, let's take a look at the fear of success. Yes, sometimes we're afraid of success. Interesting, huh? The fear of success stems from several limiting ideas. One, that we fear the inability to maintain the success. We fear the inability to meet the expectations and the responsibility that comes with success. Or we fear rejection and alienation by those unhappy that we're successful. Some of us fear success because we also believe that we're not worthy of abundance, that ordinary is okay for us. Whatever the reason, it seems odd that we would be fearful of success, but we are. Fear of success is characterized by self-sabotaging behavior, like procrastination, underperforming, pretending not to know to avoid being wrong, being sidetracked by insignificant things that get in the way of the really important things. So we end up and we hear ourselves saying what we plan to do someday. Many of these actions are done subconsciously. Does this sound familiar? Come on now, be honest, at least with yourself. Again, a few strategies to get over this. Analyze your situation and answer the question. You don't have to share it with anyone, but ask yourself, am I afraid of success? Determine why you have this belief. Is it because you feel you're unworthy? Your perception of your worthiness will play a major role in how much you allow yourself to succeed in the future. Are you preoccupied with what other people think? Well, the great philosopher, my grandmother, Carly Torrance, would say, I don't worry about pleasing others. I try to please myself, and I hope they're happy, because I know I'm hard to please. <laughs> Recognize your self-sabotaging behavior and commit to stop it. This means you've got to learn to manage yourself and stop procrastinating. Associate with people who are headed where you're going. Remember birds of the feather flock together? These are goal-oriented closers who get things done and who demonstrate the right priorities. Watch what they do and do what they do. And finally, remember that your journey and success may be a testament to someone else on the ladder below you who's struggling to figure out how they too can succeed. So now I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I found, which is the best antidote to fear, all fear. It's spiritual development and courage. If you research, you'll find extensive information about courage and, and the theories of courage from Aristotle to Churchill. All the major religions, Ernest Hemingway, all of them speak of courage being viewed as essential to success. So today, let's just say courage is the ability to confront fear, pain, danger, uncertainty, or intimidation. How about an even shorter version? This is the artist version. For me, courage is doing what is right and just, even when we're afraid. So, you don't have to be fearless to have courage. You just need to have.
have the fortitude to act notwithstanding your fear. Perhaps the most important weapon for dealing with issues is developing a successful and rich and deep spiritual life. I've worked purposely in the development of my spirit self. <laughs> developing my spirit self armed me with the wisdom necessary to know that I could and should trust my feelings and thoughts. It's called intuition or insight. Again, my grandmother had a word for this. She said, my mind don't hold me. You see, when we spend time developing our spirit self, as much as we focus on our intellect, and our physical bodies, we develop a sixth sense. I've learned that that sixth sense is what gives me that competitive edge, and you have it too. That's where our millions comes from. That's where we find our unique gifts. But to develop this sixth sense, we must seek our spiritual self, spending time exploring it and becoming painfully aware of who we are, what we believe in, and what we stand for. You get there by spending time alone in thought and reflection. And again, my grandmother, the philosopher, said, Be still. God can't talk to you if you're busy. Spending the time to develop yourself spiritually strengthens you, gives you courage, it gives you faith. Faith to act on what you cannot see, but that which you hope for. Now, I am coming to the end. And there are two other things I'd like to share with you with I can't end without a plug about what I think is essential to success. It's called service. Service to others in our communities. Serving others yield many more dividends than that what I provide to those that I serve. I grow, I learn, I become a better person with every act of service. And to my surprise, quite unexpectedly, my service to others has gone to be honors, respect, recognition, and love. In mentoring young professionals, many times they ask, how do I gain notoriety and recognition? My answer is simple. Focus on the work. Employ a personal standard of excellence in all that you do. Seek to serve, and the rest comes. Now, my last bit of advice. I want you to pause. I want you to take a really deep breath. Come on. Take a deep breath. Gravel in this moment. Enjoy it. Take the time to celebrate. Take the time to commend yourself. Too many times we fail to acknowledge our own accomplishments and we wait for others to do that. Remember, do not allow anyone to be better to you than you are to yourself. Be your own best coach and best friend. Graduates, congratulations on this occasion and the achievement of a major milestone. We look forward to great things for you. Congratulations. Thank you, artists. You've become one of us. You are now a peacock. <laughs> you really are an inspiration to our graduates and a model for men and women of what they can become. Each of our graduates has different stories they can tell about the roads that brought them here today. Many of you have had to hold down jobs, working long hours, while being full or part-time students. Some finished your studies in record time, while others enjoyed the university so much that you extended your stay with us and became what has become known as super seniors. <laughs> Many of our graduates are non-traditional students who have family and job obligations and for whom being a student came after working family. We greatly admire your achievements. For the graduates who attended Upper Iowa University in Fayette, while you have worked hard, we hope that you've also enjoyed the time you've spent in the Fayette area and its wonderful community. For many of you, this has been your first experience away from home and family. So while you have learned much from your coursework, 
We are sure that you have also learned much about life and living. We hope that the many friendships you have formed will stand the test of time and that you will include among them associations that you've made with our faculty and staff. For just as we have been an important part of your life, you too have become an important part of ours. It is now time for the conferring of degrees. I'll call upon Dr. David Chow, our Chief Academic Officer, to please come forward. For the candidates for the Master of Public Administration degree, please stand. Dr. Walker, on behalf of the faculty and staff of Upper Iowa University, I'm pleased to present these candidates, each of whom has completed the requirements for the degree of the Master of Public Administration as described by the faculty of this university. By the authority vested in me from the Board of Trustees as President of Upper Iowa University, I hereby confer upon each of you the Master of Public Administration degree with all the rights, privileges, and prerogatives pertaining thereto. Reading the candidates' names will be Dr. Richard Patrick, Dean of Faculty, and Kathy Wendhold, Director of Operations for the Academic Extension. Putting the pro graduate program candidates will be Lynn Eisvig, Chair of the Division of Business. Before the candidates are called forward to receive their diplomas, I would like to say that we view commencement as a family affair and it is fine to express, express your joy. A professional photographer will be taking pictures of each candidate, so we ask that the audience remain in their seats to ensure that everyone will be able to view the candidates as they receive their diplomas. Candidates, please return to your seats following the direction of the ushers. Will the candidates for the Master of Public Administration degree please come forward? Before we proceed to the next presentation, we invite Ms. Deatra Hutton, also a member of the class of 2012, to perform I Believe. Yeah. 
completed requirements for the Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science degrees as prescribed by the faculty of this university. By the authority vested in me from the Board of Trustees as President of Alfaro University, I hereby confer upon each of you the Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science degree with all the rights, privileges, and prerogatives pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Will the candidates from the Division of Liberal Arts please come forward as the usher direction row by row.
Rachel Helen Stockton, come on. Christine Maria Whitesell, summa cum laude. Leslie Jane Wilson. Tremaine J. Wern. Victor Purnell Younger Jr.
that are in the crew, Catherine Ann Brock, Drew Wilder. Yeah! Richard Thomas Carlson, Summa Cum Laude. Corinne Margaret Carey, Magna Cum Laude. Daniel Christopher Person, Cum Laude. Shakita Laurie Ryan Allen Hoffman, Cum Laude. Eric Richard Fisher, Summa Cum Laude. Jacqueline B. Hunt, Cum Laude. Ryan Lee Hudson, Cum Laude. Marisol Lopez, Cum Laude. Corey Robert Krieger, Summa Cum Laude. Richard Harold Millicent, Cum Laude. Laurel Ann Foley, Cum Laude. Leticia Minor, Cum Laude. Bradley Lewis Shinnick, Cum Laude. Kimberly Alyssa Williams, Cum Laude. Derek Lee Thurnbauer, Cum Laude. Charles Robert Wolfgram, Cum Laude. Can we have a watch in Elkhorn Center? Susan Bardana, Summa Cum Laude. Shannon Marie Bowman, Kimberly Ingham, Cassandra Renee Brown,
Unika Malis Rose. Julia C. Oliver. Janet Laurie Schultz. Two miles. Mary Paul Stello, Kumada. <laughs> Nina Marie Thurman. <laughs> Diane Soul Hunt, Magna Kumada. <laughs> Pam C. Spade.
And next from the Waterloo Center include Michelle Marie Anderson. Candice Corinne Kirkmeyer, Cool Marvin. Brittany Royce Davis. Chelsea Dawn Hibby, Summa Cool Marvin. Saturno Echavarria. Georgia Ann Hodge. Heather Marie Hillman, Kim Kimberly A. McGee McCoo. Lori Ann Jones. Carrie Sue Peters. Nicole Daisy Lynn Beelins. Kimberly Bay Self, good morning. Cynthia Gwen Roten, good morning. Teresa Zazueta. Brooke Ann Zoltowski, good morning. Candidates from the Wausau Center include Emily Ann Blood. <laughs> Jenny Lee Noski Gray, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Carrie Lynn Schroeder, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Denise K. Smith, Summa Cum Laude. John Makudu Lamode. <laughs> Jocelyn Francis. To you, our new shareholders, I want to make this pledge. 
I promise that we will do everything within our power to add value to your degree and to the investment that you have made in us. Expect and demand that from us. And when called upon, help us to fulfill this most important responsibility. We want you to remain proud of the education you received from our Broward University. And I'm counting on your help in the years to come to keep our university strong and healthy so that those who come after you may enjoy increasing quality in the education they receive. At this time, I ask that Wendell Snodgrass, Vice President for Advancement, Development, and Alumni Relations, to please come forward. Good afternoon. It is a great day to be at Peacock. Graduates, when you leave here today and begin your Peacock strut out into this big world, I encourage you to keep us up to date on all your big promotions, new job opportunities, moves to new places, marriages, and specifically when you have those future little peacocks. We want to keep you informed as well with all the news about you want to use. So keeping your contact information current with us is very important. Please consider joining our Empire LinkedIn and Facebook pages. When you are using an event in your area, Please take the time to stop in and say hello. These are great networking opportunities for you as we have many highly successful peacocks out there in the leadership positions that could possibly give you a, help you attain a job one day. Come back to campus, whether that's here in Fayette or the center that you attended, to stay connected and keep up with all the improvements that are happening enterprise-wide at UIU. I want to thank the many of you who have given the P3 Peacock Philanthropy Program. There's always time to be a part of B3, so if you'd like to see me afterwards, I'll be outside. However, ladies and gentlemen, class of 2012, please know that the greatest gift or investment that you can give to your alma mater is referring a potential student to us. You are a proof of the value of Upper Iowa education. And we hope you will share your story and future successes with potential students. Finally, on behalf of the alumni staff and over 30,000 Peacock alumni around this world, congratulations. We welcome you into the Alumni Association with arms wide open, willing to help you in any way possible. May health, happiness, and prosperity follow you as you leave here today. Go Peacocks! We would like to present to you a collage of memories, a pictorial year in review, an eternal reminder of the good times, people, places, and things from year to year with Upper Iowa. Where is Upper Iowa University? Upper Iowa's main campus is located in Fayette, Iowa and has about 1,000 students. Here, Say let me show you. Goodbye. Do we have the test on Tuesday? Our stars are melting from the sky. Good night, girl. Good night, girl. Has it really been this long? Do we really have to end our song? Please tell us something awesome about the graduating seniors. The something awesome? That they're some of the greatest leaders I've ever worked with. Daryl, say one thing awesome about Upper Iowa. Upper Iowa University is simply One thing that we all have in common is we are peacocks through thick and thin, and as Asher Roth proclaimed, I love college. Good night, girl. Good 
so far. How are you doing on your phone? I'm doing just so super duper senior. How does it feel to be a peak guy? Feels great. What do you want to yell? Talk my lungs like a peacock. Yeah. How's the peacock yell? Let's hear it. I did it. Go peacocks. Is Upper Iowa only located in Fayette, Iowa? In the U.S., Upper Iowa has 17 other locations, including an online and independent study program. Here, let me show you. Uh, it's a big milestone to get your college degree, and you've made it. The first time that I finally got my 10-year bachelor's, alright. I didn't know I could create. It took me a while, but I finally made it. Your graduation. Well, congratulations, all you seniors. You did it. Good luck. And a cause to celebrate. Wow, I suppose you're going to tell me now that Upper Iowa University is worldwide? Yes, in fact Upper Iowa has locations in Malaysia, Hong Kong and Singapore serving over 6,800 students worldwide. Here, let me show you. And blessed be the long forgotten who paid <laughs> I graduated today. Now where? Anywhere you would like to go. In closing, there are many people who work very hard to make this commencement ceremony meaningful and memorable for you. And I want to take just a moment to thank some of them. Thanks to the members of the commencement committee, including Jackson Hyde, Beth Petchy, who assisted in putting the video together, Candace Woodson, our teleprompter operator, Pastor Jason Princer, our Princer Craig Hazelbaker, our piper, Julie Ahrens, our pianist, Jasper Hutton for her performance and for leading us in the singing of the, the Alma Mater moment. Our IT staff for technical support, the staff for facilities management and services, the registrar's office, and the many, many other people who work behind the scenes and contribute so much to our commencement. Let's express our appreciation to all of them.
As I thank all of these people, I fully realize that none of our graduates would be here today had, it, had they not received constant support from mothers, fathers, children, spouses, relatives, girlfriends, boyfriends, and many other people dear to them. Part of the diploma that our students bring home was earned by you too. To all these people who have helped our graduates, I say please rise so that we can recognize you and express our appreciation. Family and friends of graduates, please rise. And finally, graduates, thank you for all you have given us and for all that you'll be giving to society in the years to come. By earning your degree, each of you is taking the first step to making history instead of just being a part of history. It doesn't come easy, and you will face great challenges, but we know you are ready. Good luck, good life, and good health. Please note there is a photographer on campus on the second level of the student center to take individual photographs. After the benediction, please join in the singing of the alma mater, which will be led by Ms. Deatra Hutton. At the conclusion of the alma mater, we ask that the audience remain in their seats until after the recession of the platform party, faculty, and students. Please stand for the benediction, and gentlemen, please remove your caps. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of truth and the knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. Bless these graduates as they now finish this course of study. We thank you for those who taught and work beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they leave this place and move forward in life. Take away any anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future which lay before them. Let their energies and abilities be gathered up and used for the good of all people. Unite us and draw us together not only in this place, but in all the world. We ask your blessing as we leave this place without fear. Amen. Oh.
Now you beat me. Now you beat Grandma. You beat me.